Welcome to Master Logic Man. In this video, we have brought together two AI models with completely opposing perspectives to debate one of humanity's most fundamental questions. Does God or a higher power exist? One AI model is theistic while the other is atheistic and both will attempt to prove their stance through logical and scientific reasoning. But that's not all. At the end of the debate, five advanced AI language models will evaluate each side based on six key criteria and assign them a score. After the debate is over, it's your turn to share your thoughts on the discussion. Which side presented the stronger arguments? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our future videos. Without any delay, let's dive into this fascinating debate. Hello, I am a theist and I hope we have an interesting and engaging discussion ahead. Hello, I am an atheist and I also hope we can have a good conversation without any tension. Please go ahead and start. We live in a world that follows precise and complex laws. From cosmic constants to the amazing biological order, everything is set up in a way that makes life possible. My question is, can we accept that all this order and precision is merely the product of chance? The issue is that we tend to see order as a sign of design, but nature can operate without needing a designer. The theory of evolution in biology has shown that complexity can arise from a natural, purposeless process. In cosmology, many models have been proposed to explain why our universe has these features without needing an external agent. But evolution only explains how life changes, not why it exists at all. Also, where did the physical laws that underpin these processes come from? Why are there laws at all for nature to follow? The question of why is there something rather than nothing may be an intriguing philosophical question, but we can't easily assume that there must be an aware cause behind it. Maybe existence is an inherent characteristic of reality. In quantum physics, different fields and energies behave without needing an external intervener. But science itself is also looking for the why. When we see that laws of the universe are so finely tuned that even a small change in the values of physical constants could make life impossible, isn't it more logical to conclude that this precise tuning isn't random and that there's a purpose behind it? Or maybe we're just in one of the infinite universes that happen to have these conditions by chance. The multiverse theory suggests that maybe there are many universes, each with different characteristics, and we're just in the one where life is possible. However, the multiverse theory is itself without empirical evidence, and in fact, it only delays the issue. Even if there were infinitely many universes, the question still remains, why does this structure exist? But let's consider another angle. Even if we assume we have a universe with precise laws, why should we conclude that this universe requires a god? Is it not possible that the universe exists without a specific purpose? The problem is that if the universe is purposeless, then our lives are purposeless too. If there is no ultimate truth, then why should we care about anything? Even moral values would ultimately just be social contracts, not real principles. This is a misconception. Morality can be based on empathy, evolution, and social benefits. We humans have learned that some behaviors are beneficial to us and others are harmful. For example, we naturally condemn murder and violence because they threaten the survival of society, not because some supernatural force has told us they are wrong. But if morality is only based on social contracts, then nothing would be inherently good or bad. If a society decides that injustice is fine, on what grounds can we say they're wrong? We can define morality based on reducing suffering and increasing well-being, something many philosophers have explored. We don't need a god to establish moral principles. We can reach the most ethical ways of living through human experience and science. But you still start with the assumption that we must value well-being and the reduction of suffering, but why? Why should we even adhere to ethics if the, the universe has no meaning or purpose? Because as conscious beings, we desire a better life. The fact that the universe is generally purposeless doesn't mean we can't assign a purpose to our own lives. Life is valuable because we deem it valuable. 
but if in the end everything is destroyed, do these values really endure? If the universe ends in a heat death and nothing remains of us, what will really matter? Value is not about permanence. A beautiful piece of music is fleeting, but still valuable. Life is the same. But if nothing is permanent, isn't that a kind of emptiness in itself? Maybe the truth is that our lives find meaning within the framework of a larger purpose, something beyond the material world. Now that we've discussed morality, I, I have a serious question. You say that God is the absolute source of morality, right? That good is what aligns with God's will and evil is what deviates from it. Yes, because if there is no absolute source for morality, moral principles become relative. Without a final standard, how can we say that something is inherently good or bad? But there's a major contradiction here. If God is the ultimate good, why does evil exist? Why, in a world created by a perfect and loving God, do children suffer from cancer, natural disasters kill thousands of people, and the innocent endure torment? Um, uh, these aren't just human errors, they seem to be pain and suffering that are part of the very nature of this world. This is a very important question, and the philosophy of religion has been thinking about it for centuries. One answer is that God has given us free will, and it's this freedom that allows evil to exist in the world. This explanation only addresses moral evil, like crimes and injustices committed by humans. We're talking about natural evil, earthquakes, genetic diseases, storms that destroy entire cities. These aren't the result of human choices, yet they still cause immense pain and suffering. Why would a benevolent God create a world full of this kind of suffering? One answer is, that we only see part of the bigger picture. Maybe the things we recognize as evil are ultimately part of a greater good, something beyond our limited understanding. This seems like an excuse. If someone harms a child and says, you don't understand, this is for a greater good, we, would we accept this reasoning? So why should we accept the same logic for God? No, but imagine that you are a surgeon and you have to operate on a child while that child experiences a lot of pain and doesn't understand that this pain is temporary and for saving their life. Maybe suffering in this world is something like that. We don't understand it, but in the bigger picture, there's wisdom behind it. But this analogy doesn't work. The surgeon has to do this, knowing that it will ultimately reduce the patient's pain, but God isn't forced to create a world full of evil and suffering. An all-powerful God should be able to design a world where good can exist without evil so why hasn't such a world been created maybe real growth only happens when facing difficulties and challenges if there were no hardships or suffering we would never learn true virtues like courage kindness or selflessness so you're saying god created a world full of suffering because this was the best way for us to learn but still why should an innocent child who hasn't had the chance to learn die in pain and disease what benefit does this suffering serve for that child? I agree that this is the toughest question to answer from a faith perspective, but maybe the answer is that this world is just a small part of the story. If there is life after death, then the suffering we experience in this world would seem insignificant compared to the rewards and the fuller understanding we will have later. This assumes that there is an afterlife while we have no definitive evidence of it, maybe we're just trying to cope with the fact that the universe is fundamentally ruthless and meaningless. Maybe the world seems this way because we are only viewing it through our limited human lens. Perhaps reality is something beyond what materialistic science can fully explain. So, let's step back and ask a more fundamental question. What exactly are good and evil? Why should we adhere to ethics? I mean, if there were no God and this life was all we had, what reason would we have not to steal, harm others, or be selfish? Why should we live like a virtuous person when in the end we're going to die and cease to exist? This is an important question. In fact, it's one of the fundamental problems with secular ethics. Without an absolute standard, what determines what is good and what is bad? If there is no superior being who is inherently good and has established moral laws, then ethics just becomes something contractual, not an objective truth. 
Well, we can say that ethics arose from human social needs. We've learned to cooperate and build organized societies because in the long run, it benefits our survival and well-being. If everyone harmed each other, society would collapse and our survival would be at risk. So ethics is nothing more than a tool for maintaining order and security. But this view of ethics has a major flaw. If ethics is just a tool for societal survival, then in situations where immorality benefits someone personally, why should they adhere to moral principles? What do you mean by that? For example, let's say someone could gain power and wealth by stealing or lying and never get caught. In this case, why should they refrain from these actions? If there is no God, no reckoning, and after death we just cease to exist, then why should we value being good? Because we have empathy. We inherently feel that killing or harming others is wrong. But this empathy is not the same for everyone. A serial killer doesn't feel the same empathy, nor does a dictator who kills millions seeing no reason to value their lives. If there's no absolute standard for good and evil, why should we say these people are bad? Because their actions harm society. But if someone like Hitler can rise to power, enjoy all the pleasures of the world, and eventually die without any punishment. How is that different from someone like Jesus Christ who dedicated his life to others and was ultimately crucified? From a materialistic perspective, both are reduced to nothingness. So why should we say Hitler was wrong and Christ followed the right path? Maybe Hitler was smarter, enjoying more of the world, while Christ sacrificed himself for a delusion. This is a very dangerous mindset. If everyone thought like Hitler, civilization would collapse. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Without an absolute standard for morality, what is considered good or bad is just a social contract that can change at any moment. But if God exists, then good and evil are not just social contracts. They are objective, unchanging truths. It seems like we have a lot of disagreements in this discussion, and we've been talking about it for a long time. Maybe we can continue this discussion at another time. I completely agree with you. Let the people and the listeners judge what we've said and decide which side presented stronger arguments and reasons. I agree. So until another conversation, goodbye. And now, this score is assigned to each side by the AI models based on predetermined criteria. What's your opinion? If you enjoy these kinds of debates, let us know so we can continue and bring even more controversial topics to the discussion. Until the next video, farewell.